What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense, and this deep dive had me up most of the night and into the morning because some of this stuff has been scrubbed off the internet. So remember, when Monique is talking truth to power, she's doing it against very, very powerful people. So um, y'all hit that like button because we're about to get into a lot of things. <laughs> So I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. Thank make you. It makes sense to me intellectually. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make it make sense. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things of your dreams. Let hey, me work out all the things. No, no, this is the party. Oh, why? Right. I just come back when everybody get here. No, no, stay. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I just come back later when everybody get I here. said stay! <laughs> oh, 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 Diddy, all right, I'm here. Party with me, Daddy. <laughs> I'll be the first one here, okay. Uh, <laughs> where, where everybody at? It's just me and you in here today. Hmm? Yeah. Now come dance with Brother Love. I mean, ain't, ain't no music playing right now. I said dance for brother love. Okay. Take that. Y'all, there has been a change and a shift in culture. After Cassie did what she did and spoke truth to power to Diddy, it has been like a, the snowball effect. And Club Shay Shay is the way to get your story out and actually speak to people and actually have people listen to you. We saw with Cat Williams and now we're seeing it with Monique. A lot of these things Monique has already said before, but again, shout out to Shannon Sharp. The way that he delivers this is unlike anybody else because it's messy, but it's messy in a way that brings understanding. Whatever accolades he gets for this podcast, he absolutely deserves it. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Uh, he's one of my faves. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. I want to start with some of the Monique versus Oprah stuff because some of this was like news to me. So, and also, um, I'll link a couple of my videos at the end of this video. One about Tyler Perry and Christian Keys. If you're new to the channel, I got some inside information about Christian Keys and Tyler Perry. I'll link that video and my DL Hewley video from last night involving DL versus Monique. Let's start here. Initially, they think they're talking to my attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And they say, we want Monique to come to Cannes. To, she promoted so well in the United States, mm -hmm. we want her to go international and promote the movie and do Cannes. Okay. I tell my husband, please let them know I respectfully decline. I appreciate it, but I respectfully decline. I'm gonna spend some time at home. Right. Lionsgate calls back. We really would like for Monique to come to Cannes mm -hmm. to promote this movie. Please let them know I respectfully decline. I'm gonna spend time with my family. Lionsgate calls back and says, what is it gonna take for us to get Monique to come to Cannes? We'll give her another week in France. We'll upgrade her room. My husband said, is there a dollar amount attached to what you're asking for? Um, <laughs> a week in Cannes and we'll upgrade the room does what if this woman is making millions of dollars on other pictures and other movies? But I digress. Oh, we, we will never pay anyone to promote a film. Never. He said, we understand. And we're never going to work for free. You're asking her to do something that she's not obligated to do. Correct. Well, what is this the attorney? He said, actually, I'm her manager and, I, and her husband. Now we can put it on the husband's being difficult. Right. Right. OK, so I don't owe anybody anything. That's why I was never sued. Now we go to the Hoodie Awards. Tyler Perry is there. OK, mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me in his room. Now, when I go into Tyler Perry's room, his staff is in there. Now, you ready to holler laughing? Yes. OK, I take my security in there with me because I always want to have somebody with me. Right. Right. Tyler Perry does this. <clears throat> and the people scattered. They all left out the room. I said, look at this shit right here. You saw me, and they all scattered. That wasn't the life, that's for the people. 
You don't like cl- lights on? And somebody said that lights off. I think the boondocks covered that. So this has been out there. The, if the boondocks said it, it must be true. <laughs> They got their asses about okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. So at the time, my security looked at me. I said, "You don't work for Tyler Perry. You could." Touche. So Tyler Perry says to me, "Listen, Monique, we really need you to, you know, promote this film because if you get nominated for the Oscar, your next movie is going to be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next movie is six to eight million dollars." I said, "Tyler Perry, who you talking to? I'm a black woman." When they gonna pay that kind of money? No, I'm telling you, that's what it is. And and, and if you just go and promote it, I said, "Listen, brother." You can pay me to promote it because at the time now him and Oprah producers on the film. Right. I said you can pay me to do it. I don't care where the check come from, but y'all just gotta I, pay I me to do money. it. He said I'm not in the habit of giving out money for free. I said and I'm not in the habit of working for free. But you gave TD Jakes a check for a million dollars, but that's another story, and I'm back. Mm-hmm. So when he then says that, it's like listen, we both mutually agree. You don't give out free money. I don't we'll work for free. free. We hugged Shannon. When we were done talking, we hugged. Do you hear me? Yes. We hugged like brother and sister. Like it's cool. He understands. Right. Okay? okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. I want y'all to take your time because I'm going to go in. Yeah, you that's your camera right Yeah, because the people at home, they sitting there like, Monique, what happened? Bitch, I'm going to take. <laughs> she calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? You've got to draw the line. Exactly. Again, I it's not registering to me. Both Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey are billionaires. And if you can give T.D. Jakes a million, at the very least, you guys could compensate her for the work because everybody's name is now associated with Precious. So it would only make sense that you would want to make Monique happy so that she can continue to promote the movie and then make it make what all of you guys were a part of an Oscar winning movie. See, that's what people don't want you to understand. It all ties into your ego, your IMDB, your producer credits. And it wasn't a lot of money to billionaires. I, I just don't get it. They maybe just didn't like her. Line, and you're saying when you know they're asking you for too much, she said, you're absolutely right. And I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. So when you're looking at me saying, well, what happened? I'm telling you what happened. But, okay, she's saying that privately, but did she voice that publicly? Did you hear her say it? I did. Did you hear her say it? JT, did you hear her say it? No. Zach, did you hear her say it, Zach? Regina, did you hear her? Tommy, no one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone and that when she was talking to him mm-hmm. in that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, mm-hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies, that's good with the little Internet. We had a, a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended, Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about. Now, y'all. This is Reggie Wells. Listen closely. That's Reggie Wells. He recently passed away. Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he lo- I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know, it's not right. Now that man shared that on that show. So I'm not saying nothing that hasn't been shared. So you have people that will say things in private, but won't do it publicly. Okay, y'all. So y'all know me. When Monique gave me some stuff, I was looking for it. And the closest I found to this was actually Lipstick Alley. This was a link to the video. Apparently, the only video on the internet that had Reggie Wells going through these comments, I mean, actually going back and forth with Monique, telling Monique all the stuff about Oprah and how he heard this conversation and why you just didn't get the money. What's up, really, B? I see you in here. Um, (laughs) well, it's gone. It is now off the internet. So if anybody has access to maybe a clip that you stored, send it to me, make it make sense now on Instagram. Um, also you guys, I just had a friend who lost his actual major blog. He had over 200,000 subscribers. It's gone. 
So he has no way of getting in touch with all of the people who used to follow him. So one way to do that is definitely follow my Instagram in case something is to happen to this page. It's make it make sense now. I'll scroll it at the bottom. Um, because anything can happen and they could take your platform and you don't really have a way to reach out to say, this is where I am now, or this is my new platform. So definitely follow me and make it make sense now. But anyway, it's gone off the internet, y'all. They can scrub some stuff off the net and this one is gone. But I, you know, shout out to Lipstick Alley. I was, I definitely let you guys know that Lipstick Alley was the one who had a lot of the stuff on Cassie um, before it was actually out when it was just blind items on Lipstick Alley. So shout out to them again. Um, here we go. They kind of gave us a, a synopsis. Um, it says money changed Oprah. He was disconnected from the community. Cringes went Oprah cringes when people call her auntie and she would send him on vacation whenever he would say things that Oprah did not agree with. That's kind of a synopsis of what this man said. But in terms of actually finding the video, you won't. Um, let me see. There were some other things that he had said. Um, it says, so Oprah and Reggie aren't cool anymore. Hell, I thought he still did her hair. Actually, he was the makeup artist. I keep telling y'all Oprah is an insufferable bee. Everybody but Gail and Quincy Jones falls out with her ass. Tyler Perry doesn't even fool with her anymore. Um, and then there were some more. Let's see. Tyler got close to Oprah and Gail and even bought them Bentleys. As he got close, he observed quality, quietly, and saved her with his shows. Oprah then wasn't satisfied and tried to give him notes to improve the show so they can be better for awards contention. But Tyler said no. Consequently, he started looking for a new home and landed at BET. So the stuff was getting spilled, y'all. Again, shout out to Lipstick Alley because they were the only people who posted it on the internet. The clip is gone. I couldn't find it with Monique's. I went through um monique's podcast and even look through all the episodes that had anything to do with what she discussed and there's nothing about reggie wells there either so but let's continue with these are some powerful people <clears throat> I'm the person that I will say it in private and I'm going to say it publicly because that's the only way we make it right. But you don't need somebody to talk good to your face. You need somebody to talk good behind your back. So if you're telling me, if you're telling me what a great person I am in my face, but you're telling me I'm dog poop behind my back, what good is that, Mo? What does that make those kind of people, Shannon? That's... What does it make those kind of cowardly. people? That's cowardly. That is cowardly. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts... Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the Kevin Hart. These are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. Yeah. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the Met and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. Invite them. I have. They not going to do it? Well, look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He do him again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all come on, stop playing. They ain't coming on, Mo. Thanks to you. You know how. And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it because <laughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend mm -hmm. and someone says to me, Monique Shannon. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I got a comment. Um, we got almost 1600 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. TG says, ma'am, sorry. Don't be sorry. Ar around here, you are welcome to have a different opinion. But Tyler Perry or Oprah should not pay Monique to do anything. Why is Monique justified in her decision? But Tyler Perry and Oprah wrong for not starting to pay artists to promote their movies. I have I have said this from the beginning. If you are a billionaire, 
even at billionaire status, you cannot buy an Oscar for one of the movies you produced. If you are pushing somebody to help you get to that level, because it is a different level, doesn't matter how much money you have. An Oscar is something that a lot of people want and most people will never have. They might see an Oscar, but they most people will not actually get one. Mo, they did not even pay for, oh, I was about to call her Precious, Gabrielle Sidibe to get her makeup done. Monique had to provide that. You are shinning and grinning with billionaires. But when it comes time to actually, what's the term I'm looking for? Provide just something small. Monique made $50,000 for this movie. You are going to Cannes. You're spending time. They want you to do extra promo. They want you to push, push, push. But nobody can say, well, Monique is not as wealthy as Oprah and Tyler Perry. Gabrielle Sidibe was brand new artist. We need to make sure that Gabrielle Sidibe is cared for. No, they didn't do that. So I stand with Monique in that. There are, there are, they could have appeased her in that way. It's not that hard. Oprah wanted an Oscar. Oprah, you know, even at Oprah's level, they didn't give out Os they didn't win the Oscars for the color purple. So anyway, um, but I get what you're saying, TG. I definitely do. I definitely do. And I appreciate a difference of opinion. Um, S. Marlene said, I would love to talk to you. I can't say it online. Um, well, you can hit me up on Make It Make Sense Now on Instagram. Um, that's definitely a way to reach out. Thank you for the super chat, um, Miss Marlene. So let's let's move on from this part because there was a lot of juicy parts. <clears throat> it was we're gonna beat Monique really good. We're gonna sit her down. And 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 I made it public financially. My family took a hit, Shannon. And when I tell you we took a hit, right? We took a hit. So when you see our sister go through that. You see her go through and we act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen, we got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that allows Lady O to keep on doing what she's doing. Now, to me, she does have a point. Really B says, like Monique says, she was not contractually obligated with Oprah and Tyler. They were not obligated either. I don't know why they became the villain. Okay, well, Tyler was, I mean, what's his name? Tyler Perry was not obligated to give T.G. Jakes a million dollars. He did it. You know why he did it? Because there is, it's a look. It's a, I'm going to stand at T.G. Jake's podium and give him a million dollars. And now my name is going to be on the news cycle associated with that. You know who's else? You know what else would be in the news cycle? Tyler Perry and Oprah produce a Oscar award winning film. So sometimes you have to like see the bigger picture. If Monique had not been saying these things, then the original exposing of Tyler and Oprah would not have happened. Sometimes you got to look at the bigger picture. And if paying her an extra 50000 or or 100000 when you can give T.G. Jakes a million, why not? Why not? I, just my opinion, contractually obligated or not, the same way that they want Monique to just play ball and do it for free, they could have just played ball and gave her you know, a uh, uh, hundred thousand to them is nothing, but they're not in the business of giving away free money. But TG Jake's got some. Just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> Y'all know I love to argue with really be. We argue in real life too. Um, but okay, let's continue. So we got Taraji, who kind of, you know, did a little bit of a backpedal. Because if it were not for Oprah Winfrey producing this film, I don't know if I would have been seen or heard. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what producers do. They, Because she actually called me and was like, 
if there's anything I can do, you just let me know. And I said, I was nervous because it is Oprah. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, since you asked, <laughs> I told her she fixed it, everything the next day. Uh, uh, Monique did have a point. And then Oprah comes back. I'd just like to say about this whole to write, you know, I, I heard I was trending yesterday uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So whenever I heard that there was something that people needed, I'm not in charge of the budget because that's Warner Brothers. You know, that's the way the studio system works. And we as producers, everybody gets their salary. That's negotiated by your team. And so whenever I heard there was an issue or there was a problem, there was a problem with the cars or there was a problem with the food, I would step in and do whatever I could to make it right. And I believe that she would even vouch for that and say that it's true. I think she would vouch for that. I can vouch. Everybody would typically vouch for Oprah. The only person who is not vouching for Oprah is Monique. I do believe that there is something in Hollywood and the world when you're dealing with somebody who is extremely powerful, they have the ability to clean stuff up in a way that you would never even know because they have teams of people working to make sure that their image stays intact. There is big money in somebody's image. They're just saying we got over 2000 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button, people, because we're not done yet. <laughs> uh, OK. And we in a position of I don't want to say nothing because we saw how Monique got whooped. Now, again, that's just my humble right. opinion. But I don't know what else. to. I don't know how else to frame that. It's like, listen, you better fix that because you saw what they did to her. You saw how they treated her. Is it a situation, do you believe it's a situation that Oprah might have faced something similar that maybe wasn't as public as you? And and, and she's looking at it, well, if I faced that, went through it, and came out on the other side and look at me, it should be okay. Because sometimes we get that with parents. You know, I struggle. You say my kids should have to struggle sometimes. Um. Somebody said, why is my comment blocked? I don't even think I have any mods in here. Nobody blocked your comment. Maybe um, YouTube might have but nobody manually did um marie let's take this off also do you think that might be something going on with her or you just like she there's a disconnect there's a disconnect okay there's a disconnect and there's been a disconnect for years. There's a disconnect. And I think what happens is we place people on these pedestals mm -hmm. and we say, oh no, you can't do no wrong. We don't even want to hear it. Right. And when you hear cats say, you know what they do? They don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep talking until you take accountability. Right. Until you say, uncle, <laughs> I've done this. That's why it was so important from Oprah Winfrey to Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. Now Lee Daniels was the only one I had to deal with. Did you see Lee Daniels apologize? Mm -hmm. He walked out on the stage. stage. Not only did he apologize on stage, that man apologized to our children. That man apologized to our children and said, I need to apologize for what I put y'all through. He's the only one I had to deal with. However, it became a problem with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry that I wouldn't do something and work for free. Now, when you say, well, maybe Oprah feels like she came through it, why can't you? Right. Well, there's a story with Oprah Winfrey when she was on the show, people are talking. Richard Sher was making $55,000. She was making $22,000. These are her words. It was her co-host. She said, I had to leave because they wasn't paying me fairly. Now you say black woman who did nothing wrong and you're in the midst of this situation because she called me, Tyler Perry called me, Lionsgate called. When you were on the phone with my husband, you said, I agree with Monique. I agree with the position she's taking. But? But when it came time to say it out loud, Oprah Winfrey went totally silent. Now, to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that, right? Now, here's where when you... Now, shout out to Layla Lynn. Shayla Lynn, uh, Layla Lynn came with the receipts. Love Layla Lynn. Um, she's one of my favorite YouTubers. Because Nadia would be able to understand her better. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So that 
because I not and, and my husband is that part of our team that he has the business conversations. I'm the part of the team that you saw May 13th on the stage. So what I would ask you is because you're talking in Tyler Perry language, I would ask you to let Monique talk to Medea. Because when you start talking in Tyler Perry language, brother, you talk like you don't get it. Right, nigga. Right. You gotta laugh at it because you know. Because you know. Because you know. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Tyler. When you when I watch your movies, when I watch your movies, I dig Medea. And you know why I dig her? You know why I dig her, Tyler? Because she can be your mother. You know why I dig her? You know why I dig her? Because that bitch is real to her gut. And she don't give a fuck how I come out. She don't give a fuck how it's taken. But everybody knows she love you. But she going to tell you the real shit. See, when you stepped away from Medea and you became Tyler Perry the billionaire, this is the conversation you're having. Like, well, guys, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Okay, so after that, Tyler Perry offers to send Monique the royalties that the movie Precious is currently earning because he doesn't want her to feel like she's been used or mistreated. What you gonna do? Well, let me let me let me say this. Let me say this, and I want to talk again. Now, this Tyler at this point is saying. He's going to cut her into the royalties from the movie. He's going to give her all the royalties from the movie. The problem was not the money at this point. The problem now is you making up a rumor. That's what Monique is saying. Shout out to Tyler for doing more than what Oprah was going to do. take it from i'm gonna take it from it's business and i'm gonna take it from my brother saying listen yo this is what y'all was supposed to get okay so after that sydney and monique imply that tyler perry doesn't write his own scripts because the writer of his scripts understands life and clearly tyler perry the billionaire doesn't understand life so then tyler perry explains that he does understand life and tells them exactly how monique can make a comeback in her career Did you not just say it was wrong, Tyler, to say she was difficult for not doing something that she was not contractually obligated to do? Did you not say that you would feel that that was wrong? Or, or am I missing something? I, 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 yes. So the question I would say is, so the question I would say is, but, Here's the thing, you should, you should have made a call yeah. until- Okay, so y'all know how I am. I, it is what it is. I can side with Monique, but I can def you guys can see the difference in the way that Monique handled this and the difference that her husband handled this. So when Monique was at the start of this call, she was saying things to him like, I need to speak to Medea because Medea is real. And she kind of, there was a, there was a lightness and a levity to what she was saying. Juxtapose that to the way Sydney challenges Tyler. Now, guys, I'm just going to put it out there. We all, you know, to some level or degree work for somebody. Even if you have your own company, you work for the public, right? There. 
I'm putting myself in Tyler Perry's shoes and I'm thinking, would Tyler Perry at his level, owner of owner of his own studio, allow someone's business manager to challenge him in the way that Sydney did? I don't know that I would. You got Tyler Perry stuttering. Now, do am I here for Monique recording him and having this in perpetuity to say this man started this rumor about me and I have proof I am but I'm just in in Tyler Perry's shoes right now think he's probably thinking I would not allow anybody else's manager to speak to me in this way uh just saying I, I like to give both sides around here we got almost 3,000 in the chat y'all definitely hit the like button was that Kendu on the phone no that was her husband um, somebody said he's speaking as a manager, not her husband. I'm not disagreeing with what Sydney said, and I'm not even disagreeing how Sydney chose to say it. I'm just saying Tyler Perry was the one that was like, next time I don't want to talk to your, your husband or manager. Um, so when people are saying, because a lot of people also still do not agree with Monique. So you got to think about the other side of the coin. And the flip side to that is Tyler Perry is a boss. And most CEOs do not speak to other people's staff. He's probably used to dealing with the star themselves and, you know, the attorneys and everything work stuff out. So I'm just giving you guys um, both sides of that coin. You should have made the call until you were able to talk. So what do you think of Monique and Sydney's I will link um, Layla Lynn's full video in the description of this video, but let's get back. So that's what Monique is talking about. We got context, y'all. You did that interview with Kat. I could respect how you do it because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his words. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Moni, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. N no, 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 no. She she Monique is not playing in this interview, and she's not even letting uh Shannon get away without speaking truth to power. <laughs> oh, let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's illegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna is he gonna make a he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation? for what transpired between you and Monique. You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I'll sit right next to him. Tyler Perry will not address any of this. I told you guys, um, I did a video with the Christian Keys stuff that kind of like wrapped up the Christian Keys story into a boat. It will be linked at the end of this video. Tyler Perry is not going to address this. See? With this whole situation, and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, mm -hmm. civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong, and you're like my daughter, and we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly a commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. OK, then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. OK, who is she don't play. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. OK, fine. Right. While we're on the phone. 
Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Now you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. I look in the goddamn camera. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. I didn't even see. We had some super chats. Um, Jersey Girl says, behind every great fortune is an even greater crime. They want you to work for free because they are black and you are black. You better say it louder for the people in the back. Thanks, Jersey Girl. Chandra says, they become villains because they are. Speaking truth to power is not easy. Monique can tell you it cost her tens of millions of dollars. Um, Blessing Hot Topic says, AT Alien has the clip. I heard it this morning. Um, let's see. I'll have to look that up a little later, but, um, shout out to her if she does. Um, thank you, blessings. Um, Mucha, OW has never been for black folks, only black dollars. Oprah Winfrey. Ooh, that's what they, I've heard that. Um, Butterfly Mama says, oh, thanks for coming to member. I appreciate you. Be blessed. Get those likes up, fam. Oh, I don't know how many we have, but we got like, like 3,000 people in here. So let's see where we are on like. Yeah, we don't even have a thousand likes. Liking is a free way to support the channel. Um, please subscribe. We're well on our way to 125,000 straight shooters. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Bonnie says, everyone says Monique's delivery is aggressive, but she always addresses her audience as my baby. Big, cool auntie energy. And she don't mind being called auntie. Unlike Oprah. Don't call Oprah auntie. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, okay. So let's continue. But that was a stage the way you... Look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying, so I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother. You're like my aunt. You're like my sister, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm gonna reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said, he don't wanna revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever- That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further because okay. I want to make... Now, um, I did find this and I thought this was like, I could see the energy, the love there. And hearing that Kevin Hart, you know, actually loaned Monique money and stuff like that. I want you guys to see this. Yes. I will let, first of all, I will let her make the executive decisions because she is. Because I'm going to do it anyway. She, she's very controlled. Mm -hmm. so there's not much that I can yeah, say that would exactly. actually stick. So whatever she say, I would make it seem like I came up with the idea. Cool. Yeah. What would you want? You know, so what I would do is uh, marble floors. I'm mm. thinking about marble floors. There you go. Way. Jacuzzi right in the middle. And possibly a jacuzzi in the middle because that will set things <laughs> And on the second floor, a nightclub. Yeah. Now, what would really catch my eye, and I think other people's, if on the second floor, yeah. put a nightclub up there. This is a team right here. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go His hundred million, my ideas. Yeah. Now, my hundred million, my hundred million. But would you let Snoop Dogg fly the plane? <laughs> well, uh, well, wait a minute. It depends on what kind of flight we're taking. If we don't want the plane to take off, yes, he could fly the plane because he. Ha <laughs> ha! How high? We would be at the fifty thousand feet. You know I had to ask Snoop at one point in time what our goal was. <laughs> <laughs> what are we trying to get? Like, what are we trying to do right now? <laughs> Leave when, me alone. When are we done? <laughs> Leave me alone. He doesn't, he doesn't have a finishing point. <sighs> but May 20th, you guys, will see May 20th, our Captain Matt. Come see Soul play. Nice Thank meeting Thank you, sister. Okay, y'all. <laughs> that was funny, but that gives you some idea of how far they go back. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I love Soul Plane, but I was a big Monique fan. If you follow my channel, you know how much I love Monique. And so Monique 
killed it. But I also wanted to show you that to show Kevin Hart was the star of that movie. But who do they have working the circuit to promote the movie? Monique. That's why I wanted you guys to see that. I went to go see Soul Plane because of Monique and some more. But Monique was right there with the star promoting it. And that's there is some power in Monique doing these things. Even before she had her Oscar, Monique was a big household name. So make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my husband. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with in the mall and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world Correct. right? and was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart's name on it, you already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two-week that two period? Well, as soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin's manager, David Becky, said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby. We just got off the phone with Endemol and they said, Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you OK, though, with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship after something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication. And we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. OK, so I agree with you. Um, Casey says Kevin is not obligated to do anything with her. She is so entitled. I agree with you. Kevin is not obligated to do anything, but that's not really what she's talking about here. What she's referencing is somebody who told her something verbally, then had his team tell her something different, and then went back on his word. So she's talking more to character as opposed to we are contractually obligated to do something. Um, just my opinion, Casey, but I definitely appreciate people who have different of opinion there. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother. You said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was only up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yep. her and then and she had recorded it? Mm -hmm. That's you. Oh, um, I while we were watching that clip, I went to um, Michelle AT Alien's page and the recording they were talking about was not Reggie's. The recording that um, the, um, the Super Chat was talking about was the recording between Tyler Perry and Monique. I'm still looking for the recording from Reggie. That's what has been scrubbed off the internet. If you're just coming in, in Reggie Wells was um, Oprah's makeup artist who Monique, you know, let us or reminded us he exposed Oprah while speaking to Monique on a recorded call. On tape. So how does it go from you saying you're going to give me an apology to now I owe you an apology? But what do you want an apology for? What, what, what could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniels says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, baby. Right. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered. I would have. I love Cookie's Empire role with Taraji. But y'all, I think that Monique, if Monique was over there fighting with Boo Boo Kitty, it would have been something different. And I would have been here to see it. I think Monique would have destroyed that role, just like Taraji. I think they equally would have played the role really, really well. And then with Monique, there's another element to 
when you don't have a lot of money and you are, you know, still on the curb, Monique is your woman of choice. Then you get money and now all of a sudden you want a younger boo-boo kitty type woman. I think that that would have added a different element to the role. Definitely. I think Monique would have been a good, a good cookie lions for that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry. No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No, no. But I thought there was an apology. I, I read what there was uh, that. I thought I read somewhere that Oprah had issued you an apology and Tyler had issued an apology. That's not correct. No, no. The only person that's given you an apology. You saw it. It's Lee Daniels. That's the only person. So we are in a place where we're too afraid to call them for what it is. We're too afraid to say if it looked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. Right. So again, you see the struggle of the black woman as I'm sitting here talking to you and you say, Mo, but why would you record him? But you heard the man violate me. The first thing wasn't, I can't believe that cat did that to you. It's why would you do it? And we understand it right. because we've been conditioned that way. Because when you, you had to get somehow, because when you're telling people these are lies, yes. nobody is believing Monique. So now, even though you have, I like now we, if you follow Shannon, the way I follow Shannon, Shannon is one who does not, he allows the guests to really speak. I applaud Shannon in this interview for taking a stance. You know, Monique pushed him in some places, but in other times, other times you can really just hear him agreeing and his wheels are turning. So I definitely like that about the way Shannon conducted this interview. Have him record his voice and that's him. And He's saying he made it up. Now it's no longer, oh man, I can't believe he lied on Mo. Mo, why'd you record it? So now they put the owners back on you. Where's the win? How do we win? How does a black woman win when you say, here he is right here? And I look to the community and say, how long do we allow us to keep being exploited, used up, taken advantage of, and because we think somebody can give us an opportunity, mm -hmm. we just say, shh, I'm not going to say nothing. If we keep operating like that, Shannon, you're going to have a whole lot of us sitting right here in the same seat, almost telling the same story. Why do you think Tyler is afraid to meet with you and your husband? Why does it need to be you one on one when he meet with other representatives and and and, and the cli their client? Why, what is it about you that he feels it needs to be just you and he? Does he think your husband is some kind of negative influence on you? He thinks the husband is saying things that that Monique probably wouldn't. A lot of people do not respect Monique's husband, period. They don't see the value in him. Um, that's why they treat him like that. Say if I just had, had an opportunity to talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, what do you think that is? Let me say <coughs> this. Me. People better be glad my husband is by my side because there are people in Hollywood that know wherever you act up is where I show up. People know in Hollywood, <laughs> baby, Jen, and I don't say it with a badge of honor. It's just what it is. Well, I've had to say, who you think you're talking to? And we're sitting there with the president of the studio or the... Con my patience level is not going to allow... I've been molested. I've been violated. So the moment I see you trying to do it, we're going to have to address it. My husband is nothing but a gentleman. And you know why people have a problem with my husband? Because he's right to it. There's no, we're going to dance around the bush. He's right to it. Right. And people like Tyler Perry, people like Oprah Winfrey, they look at my husband and say, how dare you be so direct? Right. How dare you not put your eyes down when you're talking to me? How dare you do that? My husband is also my manager. Why would he want to exclude my right. management? It's like, Tyler, you should want my husband to be there. You, right. you, you may want him to be sitting right there so that way we can have a conversation that everyone can be heard. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you, Shannon, because most people are too afraid. That's heard the tape. They're too afraid to say, no, I heard it. And this is what he said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate T.S. Madison because T.S. Madison was the first one to say, no, I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. So when folks were trying to jump on her, she not down for the black woman. Listen, baby, y'all don't even understand the right. fights that sister be having when ain't nobody watching for the black woman. Right. So I appreciate you looking in that camera. Right. I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is... I'm going to say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds, within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. 
What you trying to tell me about this sister? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. See, when I speak about Oprah Winfrey, and let me be clear, I love that sister because she's our sister. Mm -hmm. She just got to come back across the street. We got the light on. When I speak about Oprah Winfrey, I speak about that woman because she's spoken about me. And when you begin to speak about me privately, I'm going to speak about you publicly. Mm. You've been unfair. You've been unjust. I'm sorry. And you watched a black woman. This is the time I miss Wendy Williams, because you know Wendy would be having a field day with this whole interview. <laughs> I'm going to be thrown under the bus, and you said nothing. And here's what's interesting as well. My husband was saying to me, after I won the Oscar award, right? Mm -hmm. And she had the people come, you know, to talk to the Oscar winners. And I go on the stage and I talk to the Oscar winners. Well, when we go to a commercial, the people in the audience, and I say this humbly, as my husband was telling me, he said, mama, they wasn't screaming Oprah. They were screaming Monique, mm -hmm. right? right? So much so, I had to say, y'all gonna shut that shit up now. We get ready to go back on the air. We right. having fun, right. right? He said, but I watched Oprah. He said, I watched her almost mm -hmm. turn in her seat like they screaming her name. Now, some people will say, oh, Monique, you're, you're reaching. Well, let me tell you what then happens. The movie, The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Now, okay. Things like that is why people have a problem with Sydney. Monique was sitting right there this whole time. You're going to say that Oprah shifted in her seat because you're the star. Oprah will always be Oprah. So I get what she's saying but i can tell you that's why people devalue some of the things that sydney says and does they think that sydney plants a bug in monique's ear in addition to not respecting him but this would be an example of that <clears throat> lee daniels came out and said i did offer monique the butler but as he said to me he said mo at the time i didn't have no power and i didn't have no money so when oprah said she wanted it so who played the lead role in the butler Oprah Winfrey. Now let's get into this. <sighs> How she connected those dots were very accurate. If we see that Monique got that Oscar for Precious and now Oprah says, what's one thing I don't actually have, an Oscar? And I know that Lee Daniels can make an Oscar winning movie I could see Oprah lending her money to getting this role, lending this money to the production to get this role. I could definitely see Lee saying, I want you for this role because I think Monique would have killed it. But Oprah wants that Oscar. So she's, I'm, I'm with Monique here. There is some backbiting as it applies to the two. Just my opinion. The movie was a good movie, though. Lee Daines was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor, and he offered me the grandmother. Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. So as you're looking at me, it's the same way I'm looking at that sister. And I'm saying, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Because the way things could look, it may not be that way, but just the way things look, Oprah. Just the way you would have my family on your show, Oprah. One might say, Mo, well, I mean, if the role that they're looking for a Black um, big, go ahead and big. say it. Shannon's so careful with his words. He wants to say fat not, black woman. Not, not, if the role looking for a fat black woman, Mo, but he not, was not, like, not, you know, I want to uh, keep my podcast, Mo. Uh, Y'all ain't been to care This is why we love you, Uncle Shay Shay, because we want you to say it, a fat black woman. Now, me and Oprah fit the damn description, Shay. <laughs> fat black. Don't we fit it? You, you do. But I'll be right back here to be, I'll be your neighbor up there where you live at. Listen here. Me. Listen here. Listen here. So, <laughs> so, are you lying? No. Now, I'm not going to have your big ass sitting here in the Hall of Fame and you scared to say shit. Okay. And I want to uh, excuse myself for any of the babies that might be watching this because I wasn't going to say no spicy things. But Shay Shay get me wrong now. Come on, uh, Shay. One might say, mm -hmm. or people might say, well, Mo, I mean, the role calls for a, a heavyset black woman. You, Oprah, y'all fit the roles. Yes. How do we know that she wasn't offered the role at long and, and people think that she's better, more, more qualified than you? It don't work like that, Shannon. You can't offer me. Once you say, I want you. Right. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I don't have the money <coughs> to fund a production. Right. I don't have the connections to go to the studio and say, listen, I want to do this movie. She does. Right. So when Lee says, hey, baby, she got the money, go get it. get it. But someone would just say, 
How is that working out like that? How is that happening like that? How is it that things that was offered to Monique, you seem to be playing? Okay, so y'all know I'm always really curious about hair. Um, so do y'all think that this was a perm or like one of those, you know, just for me kits? Because his hair was really laid for a long time before he went ahead and shaved it. I'm thinking this was just a straight up perm. But y'all can put it in the comments in the replay gang. Is it somebody said relaxer? Okay. Synthetic. No, no, no. He had hair. He definitely had her a wig, a wig. No, no, no. It was definitely his hair. It's giving shake and go. What? Relaxer. Weave. No, he he had hair, y'all. He had hair, but I just didn't know. You know, this one looks, it looks like it has a little, you know, some life to it. A little. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry let me get back to it. no i i told oprah about that see everything we're saying to you right now you ha you having a conversation listen with her. here i don't play the behind the back i don't play the i'm gonna share with Sh there's one thing i will share with you that i'm not sharing with anybody okay. but i don't play the behind the back and all of that i say listen let me try to get to you first now if you avoid me Okay. okay, but I tried to be respectful. I tried to call you first. When she had my family on her show, I tried to call you first. I tried to talk to you privately, but then you became the great, the great mighty Oprah Winfrey and you were too busy to talk. Well, now I'm going to talk about it. This woman has overstepped with me so in so many ways that somebody would say, if we wasn't Monique and Oprah Winfrey in the entertainment business, and we was Monique and Oprah Winfrey that worked at Costco. <laughs> I see you in the break room. <laughs> I see you at your cash register. <laughs> because she's overstepped. Wow. So I don't know, Monique. This might be the, the term cross another Rubicon. We might be going too far. Okay. I don't how do you if you feel that way? Because clearly if you feel this way. Now yes. I, I get why you feel this way. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know this. I don't I, I'm taking you at your word. Now, not 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 the Tyler because yes. I, I've listened to the audio. Yes, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about Oprah. Yes, I'm just taking you at your word. Yes, if you feel this way, is it possible she feels the exact same way about you? How could she? How could she? What have I taken from Oprah? When did I have Oprah's mother and father on my show? Mm -hmm. When did I have anybody come and speak about Oprah Winfrey on the Monique show? That's never happened. So how could she feel that? Would way? you have done that? Had her family on? Yeah. Let me tell you how we operate. When we had the Monique show, there was a comedian on there mm -hmm. and he was trying to joke T.I.'s wife, Tiny. My husband walked out in the middle of his set. He said, cut. He said, brother, we don't do that here. We uplift our folks. Mm -hmm. We don't play that. So, no, I would not have done that. OK, so I was not really following this story like way back then. Um, but I can tell you guys in the list of stuff that is scrubbed off the Internet and one of those things where you really just can't see because Monique has been telling this story for a while, is the interview between Monique's brother and Monique's mother. But I did find something that I'll share with you guys. I cannot play the, I can't show you the video. Um, somebody said, is that is that James Brown? No, that's not James Brown. That is Lee Daniels. This is James Brown. And the old Al Sharpton. Now, Al Sharpton wishes that his hair had the bounce that, you know, Lee Daniels hair had, you know, but it was a different time and different hair products. So, you know, shout out to Al Sharpton who kept his hair. Um, So this is what this is what Monique is kind of addressing here. It, this is Monique's brother on the Oprah Winfrey show. Also, uh, inappropriate touch my sister and manners that were not comfortable for her. And for that, I apologize. And I'm humbly sorry. Two years ago, Monique... So, um, that's what she was talking about. Monique did have Oprah's family on her show. I'm sorry. Yeah, Oprah had Monique's family on her show. When Oprah Winfrey had my family... And 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 I'll I'll tell y'all. And I'm looking I'm looking around, baby, because there are people here. Yes. Okay. And I don't yeah. want to be rude to the people at Shay Shay's club. You got other people in the club, mm -hmm. right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up, and she said, "I got a call from your brother," <laughs> and this is after I won the Oscar award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show, and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you, and he wants to tell other people how to look out for a predator. Right. 
I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like she didn't have to call me. She didn't, she didn't have to call me and say, no. I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father and my other brother who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's not cool, y'all. We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about- Same way about my grandmother. About them? Mm -hmm. Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show and they're talking about somebody that violated you and that woman didn't tell you that they were gonna be there. How would you feel? I would feel like you feel like you felt. Now, y'all, it goes deeper. It goes even deeper than that. And I'll tell you why. Um, you see, episode dated April 19th, 2010. This is Oprah, Alice Imes, which is Alice Imes and Stephen Imes, Daryl John. That's Monique's family. You decided for your ratings at a time to use Monique at a time where Precious had just recently come out, was tearing things up. You knew Monique was getting this Oscar buzz. You personally call her up and pretend like you care and use, you know, your own trauma as a way to get Monique to say, sure, yeah, definitely have him up because he might, him coming forward might help somebody else in the future. And then you have her family on, the rest of her family. That's pretty jacked up. That's pretty jacked up. And let's go even a little deeper with it, y'all. We got like 4,000 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. Let's go deeper because we all know that Oprah has had her own, Oprah has been very vocal about the fact that her cousin took advantage of her when she was a child. But how about this? Right here. Um, Oprah has never actually. Oprah has shared the details of her traumatic history of assault before, revealing that she was abused by several relatives, including an uncle, up until she was 14, which is when she got pregnant and was sent to live with her father. Um, but her first R word was her 19 year old cousin who abused her for several years. She has never revealed the name. So you get right up to the cusp of telling your full story, but you want Monique's full story out there. And you use the guise of, you know, I'm, I'm speaking truth to power, when in actuality, you had something else planned and that was with the family, with the rest of her family. So I'm with Monique. If that were me in that situation, I would definitely feel like I was used for ratings because Monique's name was really popping. That was when everybody knew Monique was and Monique was going to get an Oscar for Precious. So you used her, used your own trauma to somewhat bond with her, get her to approve of what you were doing, and then hit her with the rest of her family. That's not cool. Definitely not cool, y'all. I want you to see Shannon's face. I almost put this as one of the, uh, <laughs> I almost put this on the actual thumbnail, y'all, but I didn't, I didn't, but there wasn't enough space, but this face with Shannon tells it all. <laughs> betrayed that is exactly how i felt and how i feel and it's not oh i'm in a no i understand it but you betrayed me sister and i'm not the only one because at the time when she called you she said it was just your brother just my brother and when my mother was on that show do you know what i had to deal with shannon what's that i would be in the store and i would have elderly women coming up to me and they would say your mama ain't shit <laughs> wow 
Now, they wasn't lying, Shannon, okay? <laughs> they wasn't lying, baby. Sometimes you got to let the truth be the goddamn truth. Sometimes you got to just go with it. But still, it's my mother. Who's your mom? And I'm in here and I, because when she went, I'm having to defend something. And I got that. Think about this, y'all. Think about this. Let's go a little deeper. This is what we do around here. You got Monique's other brother who was actually her former manager and he has been replaced by Sydney. Now you have them, that probably that manager working in conjunction with Oprah to come out and tell parts of Monique's story that she may not even want out. How deep is that? Nobody's ever even thinking about the fact that he might be disgruntled because he's no longer the manager. But now y'all are doing Oprah. And he also had reached out to Barbara Walters as well. So who knows how much they got paid. But imagine being in Monique's shoes. You're having one of the most powerful women in the world calling you up, ask, giving you heads up. And you think that, OK, well, maybe we have something more than just a working relationship. Mm -mm. That's deep, y'all. Often. With them telling me what my mother wasn't, because you did not tell me. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mama, I'd have said, shut that shit Scratch down. It. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see. Shut it down. Now, there's a white woman named Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. They called her first. And they, as in more than likely, her former manager and brother, they called her. They were shopping these stories because they knew this was Monique's moment. See, People love to see you on the come up, but as soon as you are on the come up or they think you're a threat or they don't like something that you did or said, they will try to take you down. It's human nature. You see it time and time again. And this should have been Monique's year for triumph. And instead she's dealing with a lot of BS. And she said, Monique, I told your family, I can't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to mm -hmm. you. You just won that award. Like, yeah. why would I do that? Yeah, this. I mean, you're here. Why would I bring something that I know that you don't want to talk about? You lived it. Why do I need to replay it again? Now, y'all, don't forget, Monique did wear Barbara Walters out, though, because Barbara Walters called her children beautiful creatures on The View, and Monique wore her out. <laughs> so she did some nice, but she also called her children beautiful creatures. Uh, I think she that's when she had just had those twins. <laughs> but Barbara Walters had the fortitude to go to her and say, I wouldn't have even done this to you. But Oprah did. Ask her. Your camera right there. I, but I, I, was, I was trying to get I know, baby. But, but, but ask her. See, this is where it get juicy, right? Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're saying the right thing, yeah. but you're asking me questions that I can't answer. Right. I can't answer why Oprah Winfrey did what Oprah Winfrey did. Yeah. Only Oprah Winfrey can answer for her actions. Yes. So again, stop being scared. No, I'm not. I knew that would get him on there. Like, I knew that would pop him back in, baby. I knew that would no, get up a Shay Shay. But, but even, even this show, I have a producer and I give him a lot of leeway. But I've had people reach out and say, well, a family member said something and I want to come on your show and refute it. That ain't what we do here. Right. It's like, it happen. it's almost, you don't cross that barrier. Mm -mm. I, we, don't, don't do, we don't do the family thing. You, and that's when we got into D.L. Hewley last night. So y'all... <sighs> Your boy is traveling this morning. I'll let you guys know via Instagram where I'm at. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys know via Instagram where I'm at. So follow me on Instagram. Make it make sense now. Um, I think it's make it make sense memes on TikTok. I'm trying to get to a thousand on TikTok. Um, but yeah, this Monique and Shannon Sharp interview was definitely eye-opening even though monique has said some of these things before i am on record <laughs> saying this felt different this felt like she's speaking to an audience in such a way to pull them in as opposed to a lot of people being turned off throughout the years with monique speaking and i'm not gonna lie a lot of people do not respect monique's husband so when monique sits next to him some people are going to be turned off this was just monique telling her truth and I appreciated it. So if you're new to the channel, definitely um, subscribe. We're now close to 125,000 subscribers and I'm super appreciative to each one. Shout out to Maria who just got her Versace Tumblr. She did a photo shoot. I'll have to post that on my Instagram as well. Um, 
she posted it with it. So I'm happy she won. The, for the other two ladies, I have your addresses. When I come back, I will put your um your what what would we call that? Gifts, awards, not awards, but whatever you want from me in this channel, I will put those two things in the mail and we'll do some more giveaways soon. I still have that um Christian Louboutin tumbler that needs to go. And that we got some still, we got some more stuff, but I gotta go. Um, see you guys later. This was a lot. If you haven't, if you started in the middle, you might want to go back because we was just we were publishing all the receipts. Y'all know how we do around here. Receipts? Do I need to bring the receipts, oh, no. baby girl? Oh, no. I got receipts. Oh, <laughs> see y'all later. <laughs>